New at 10, we're learning more tonight about the criminal past of the IHOP shooter. Police say 25-year-old Roderick Turner argued with, then shot two employees at the restaurant on Memorial Parkway and Drake Avenue Wednesday night. Turner killed Roy Brown Sr., a 56-year-old IHOP employee. He also shot and wounded Brown's son, but the son pulled out his own gun and killed Turner. WFF 48's McKinley Struthers spoke with the district attorney's office today. He joins us now live tonight. McKinley, some people are also questioning why the employee had a gun as well. Yeah, that is true, Kim. As you just said, that employee uh, was shot himself and was arguably defending himself and his co-worker, which turned out to be his father. The person that police say was the aggressor in all of this was a name familiar to the DA's office, leading some to question tonight if more could have been done. The system that we have in place does work. It just, you can't stop everything. As we learn more about what happened inside this IHOP Wednesday night that left two people dead and another rushed to the hospital, more questions are being raised as to why the alleged shooter had a gun in the first place. It's not as easy as people think it is. There's extensive background checks. As we did a background check on that alleged shooter, 25-year-old Roderick Turner, we found he had some run-ins with the law in the past that perhaps would have stopped him from purchasing a gun. Madison County District Attorney Robert Broussard tells 48 News his office has worked on cases against Turner, but they never went anywhere for, quote, a number of reasons. We did request more information on what those reasons are, but D.A. Broussard wasn't able to get back with us today. Now, you may remember last Tonight, we told you the gun Turner fired inside this restaurant that killed 56 year old Roy Brown was purchased legally in the county. On one hand, we got to stop killing people. On the other hand, you can't take away people's right to defend themselves. And that's what Brown's son did, firing back at Turner, killing him. Joshua Lee is a member of Bama Carry, a statewide gun advocacy group. He doesn't know who to blame in this incident, but praises the law for allowing Brown's son, he says, to defend himself. Up to the, the county or the state or even the federal government to tell me how and when I can protect my, my family. While questions surrounding this case remain tonight, two families are grieving the loss of their loved ones as county leaders work to figure out perhaps what more could have been done. Back out here live, I did reach out to IHOP officials today to find out what their policy is surrounding employees having a weapon on them while on the clock. As reported, Brown's son, an employee of this restaurant, is who returned fire at Turner, killing him. Now, while many refer to him as the hero in this matter, some are questioning the restaurant's policies. I did speak with the manager over the phone, taking that question to him, but he told me they did not have a comment on the matter tonight. For now, that is the latest live here in Huntsville. I'm McKinley Strother for WAFF 48. Tonight we are getting our first look at new surveillance video from the IHOP shooting last night. Take a look. You can see Huntsville police cars swarming the scene, running out of their cars and into the restaurant. Inside, officers found Roy Brown shot to death by Roderick Turner. Turner's body also on the floor, shot and killed by Brown's son. Here's what we've learned about this case in the last hour. The restaurant will reopen tomorrow morning at 6. It's been closed since shortly before 10 last night when the shooting happened. Way 31 also learned the restaurant has been professionally cleaned and sanitized. All day, Way 31's been talking to people who told us about the victim, Roy Brown, who was a caring man, a father figure to many. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Dan Schaefer. Tonight, Way 31's Cody Fisher spent the evening digging into the background of the man responsible for his death. He joins us live from IHOP now with what he's learned. Cody? Dan, here at the IHOP, the memorial for Roy Brown continues to grow. There is more balloons, flowers, and candles here at the IHOP along Drake Avenue and Memorial Parkway. Now, I talked to a man who works just on the other side of Memorial Parkway from where I am right now, and he says seeing something this terrible happen in this area is definitely out of the norm. The most you see is routine traffic stops. You know, people speeding and stuff like that. Never anything so serious like people getting shot. Eric Hernandez says it does make him view the area differently. I think it's more scary because it happens so close. You know what I mean? You don't expect for anything like that to happen until it actually happens nearby. Way 31 reviewed court documents that show the shooter, Roger Turner, was accused of shooting at other people when he was 18 years old. It happened twice, just three months apart. Both cases went to a grand jury, and both times the grand jury decided not to indict him. 
He was also accused of receiving stolen property in 2016, but the district attorney's office did not prosecute him. Way 31 talked to his mom over the phone today. She did not want to comment about what happened at IHOP. Meanwhile, Hernandez says this shooting will make him more aware of his surroundings. It's always in the back of my mind, you know, considering with everything that has happened all over the, you know, the United States. Now, A31 asked the Huntsville Police Department if the gun Turner used in the shooting was owned legally, but so far they have not responded. Reporting live in Huntsville, Cody Fisher.